Hello and welcome to the session on functions. This is brought to you by Handa Gafanda. First of all, we need to understand what is a function. A function shows us a relationship between a dependent and an independent variable. Say, for example, if my values of x are 1, 2, 3 and so on, the values of fx are 10, 20, 30 and so on. X is my independent variable and fx is my dependent variable. It is known as the dependent variable because it depends on the value of x or on the value of the independent variable. What is the relationship here? The relationship here is fx is equal to 10x or 10 times the independent variable will be the value of the dependent variable. Whatever values x can take in a function is known as the domain of the function and whatever values fx can take are known as codomain of the function. The values that fx will take are known as the range of the function. Please be very careful about the difference between the codomain and the range. Whatever values the dependent variable can or may take are known as the codomain but the precise set of values that fx which is the dependent variable will take is known as the range. There are various type of functions such as many to one, one to one, into, onto but I don't think someone is going to ask you that. Something more relevant is an even function and an odd function. Let's see. If f of minus x is equal to fx then it is an even function. However, if f of minus x is equal to minus of fx, then it is an odd function. A natural number may I be even or odd, those are the only two choices. But a function, if it does not follow any of these properties, then it is known as a non-function or so to say, neither odd nor even function. An example of an even function would simply be fx is equal to whereas of an odd function would be fx is equal to x. Think about it, x square. If I replace x with minus x, what shall I get? It will remain x square. So both of them are equal here. If I replace x with minus x, what will I get? fx will become minus x or minus of fx. This will be an odd function. If I want to look at a non-function, that would simply be x plus x square. As you can see here, I have added an even function and an odd function. And the result is a neither even nor neither odd nor an even function. As in numbers, it is not necessary here that if you e multiply even and odd, you will get an even number. You add even and odd, you will get an odd number. All those rules are applicable only and only in case of natural numbers. Whereas in case of functions, you will have to find it out on each function on its own. Let us have a look at a few graphs. Suppose I am given the graph of fx is equal to mod x, that is the absolute value of x. This is something that it will look like. fx is going to be positive whatever be the value of x. That means it will be x when x is positive and it will be minus x when x is negative. The point here is origin and it is bound to pass through the origin because f0 is 0. How is this graph going to change if instead of fx I am looking at fx plus 2? That means I am shifting the entire graph two units upward because I am adding an extra 2 to it. So the point here which was let's say A will be shifted upwards to this point which is two units above. As a matter of fact each and every point in the graph is being shifted two units upward. If instead of a plus 2 I had minus 2 similarly A and all the other points in, a, in the graph would have shifted two units downwards. What will happen? If instead of just adding or subtracting an absolute value, I change the value of fx to f of twice of x. That means when I input 1, the function f or mod x will take double of it. So f of 2 is actually mod 4, f of 5 is actually mod 10. What will happen is my slope will increase or the graph will get narrower and not narrower. Something of this sort. However, if instead of multiplying it by something or raising it, if I divide it or I make it x by 2, then the graph will become broader, the slope will become lesser and lesser. 
However, another change which can take place instead of adding plus 2 or minus 2 to the overall value, I make it f of x plus 2 where the x plus 2 is inside. That will make my entire graph shift. How will it shift? When I am adding plus 2, it will shift to the left hand side. Why so? If the value of x is 0, then mod of 0 is 0 and that's how I obtain the point A. But what will happen in this case? What should I put in the place of x such that I get the result as 0? This should be minus 2. Only then I will get mod of 0 as 0. And that is the reason the point A here shifts to minus 2 comma 0 in this case. However, if it was x minus 2 instead of x plus 2, what will happen? I leave the value of x which is my independent variable to be 2. When it is 2, this becomes f0 or x is equal to 0. So then I will get this point 2 comma 0. This will be my a if it is f of x minus 2. Just try and find out the graph for f of x plus 1 divided by 2 and plus 3. Let us see the solution to the problem I just gave you. I was given fx is equal to mod x and I was asked to find out the graph for f of x plus 1 by 2 plus 3. So I am doing it in a step by step fashion. First of all, if instead of fx I am doing x plus 1, as I said explained in the previous slide, it will be shifted one unit to the left. So that is the tentative graph. I am just shifting it one unit to the left. The angle has not changed. It was 45 degrees before and it is 45 degrees now. It might not look like that by the drawing, but it is. Then I am dividing the entire thing by 2. How does that change the graph? As I said earlier also, when you divide it by something, the graph would become wider. The angle with the positive direction of the x-axis will reduce. That is what is happening here. And finally, when I am adding 3 to the entire thing, the entire graph will shift upwards as you can see here. It was touching at minus 1 comma 0. It has moved up to minus 1 comma 3. This point which was 0 comma half has moved up to 0 comma 3.5. Please stay with us to continue the discussion on functions at Handaka Funda. Thank you.